This episode of the Damage Guild podcast is sponsored by listeners like you. Join the guild at patreon.com slash damage guild to receive exclusive perks, member rewards, and bonus content. Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. Shaba is on watch as morning approaches. The soft sounds of breathing, of sputtering campfires, and of cold breeze die away, leaving you in silence. I immediately rush back to Aslan Tokus. You see a hooded figure wielding short sword. You see him stab Aslo. Aslo lurches and then falls back down. And then the figure reaches towards his head and pulls the crown off of it. What happened to the beast? It's going to make a Another tech, uh, Shaba. Once again, you can feel your life force being sapped by its bite. 23 points of damage. Ugh, I fall unconscious. Tokus, you saw the beast swoop down and attack Shaba. You also can look down at the ground next to you and see Aslo covered in blood, and you can see clearly that he's not wearing the crown. And again, I'm, I'm still in the effects of silence. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I would know from experience, because we fought silence before, it's not all-encompassing, right? I mean, it's impossible to make sounds, but the spell that you're aware of should probably have you make an arcana check, and then it could tell you the details about the spell. Yeah, I'm going to make an arcana check. Ooh, I rolled I rolled a crit on my... I got a perfect arcana. <laughs> I rolled a 20. So it's generally a relatively small radius. It's 20 foot radius around some point in space. So you know it's affecting where you are and where you were before. It can't go much more than like 20 or 30 feet from where you're standing at this point, but you don't know what direction it spreads in. Right. That's assuming it's the silence you're familiar with. It's possible that there's some other variation that's more powerful or whatever. I mean, I think if my goal is to get the guy, guys, I have the perfect spell for this, but I need to see if the silence is exitable. I really wish, Jay, you would have, before you went down, like check that out for us but he wouldn't be able to relay that information to tokus anyway right exactly while i was standing in the ed- at the edge of the web could i hear anything um well if i tell you then yeah. he's gonna know and that's not <laughs> yeah i just right. i need to go for it and and if i can't get the spell off i think it's time to use a healing potion hmm. you said that we could administer those to unconscious players right yeah yeah okay so here's my plan i'm gonna walk over to where shaba is And I'll see the web and see what he was trying to do, I imagine, right? Like, Tokus wouldn't have been totally bewildered by this this happenstance. I'm going to go check out my friend. I'm going to see the scene of the crime. Right. All right, so I'm going to head for Shaba. Yeah, you can make it to him. What do I see? So you see him lying on the grass. You still have some extra movement if you wanted to try to move past him and see if the silence ends just a little bit closer to the web, because he didn't quite get all the way there. Okay, so I want to try to get out of the silence, but I still want to be... Let me just step on the other side of his body, I guess. And that is the limit of the spell. So as soon as you take a few steps past him, Mm -hmm. the web's right in front of you, and you can hear again. Mm -hmm. Okay, do mine mine ears (laughs) hear... I almost said mine eyes. Do my ears detect someone struggling in the web in front of me? Like, I know Shaba. I know Shaba wouldn't have just wasted a charge for no reason. Give me a perception. I'm going to percept, guys. In fact, maybe <laughs> I should use my session in... Sp- mm. Maybe not. I'm not going to. No. no. <laughs> All right. I roll... Uh, let's see. I have a zero to my perception, guys. So that is a straight 10. Exact seas on the 10. Okay. Still not bad. Who wins a tie? Tie goes to the... I think that would be the perceiver wins a tie. Yeah. Hmm. Is it the perceiver or the... Yeah. You can hear just barely some rustling in the webs. You can't see it very clearly, but you think there's something moving around in the middle of it. So this spell, guys, I'm about to cast is perfect maybe for... Well, okay, so I could heal Shaba. I think I should blast him. I could use Rhyme's Binding Ice, and that would freeze the guy and buy buy us more. Well, if he fails, he has to fail. But it, right. it could buy us more time. But it deals damage too, right? Yeah, it's going to be 3d8 cold. That is perfect. Or half that. And if he fails it, it also freezes, it encases him in ice. And, and can I, like, line up the pizza so that it's pretty much, like, with the web? You don't think healing Shaba is the way to go here? 
I don't think so. I think we should try no, to... No, neither do I. I think I can kill him and or freeze him. Mm. Yeah, I thought originally that he drank a healing potion, but he drank a potion of invisibility. We think it was an invisibility potion. We think. So it makes more sense to try and either KO him or freeze him in place. Yeah. Like, I might kill him even if this is only half 3d8. Yeah. Um, I think that healing you or Shaba was good. I actually started off my turn, Brian, thinking I was going to heal you. Because A, you haven't been in the fight for a while and it sucks to be there dead or on the ground. But <laughs> B, because you would be able to dispel the silence. But since I've walked out of the silence, mm. now I'm thinking I was either going to heal Shaba or try to blast him with this AoE spell. I think the blast is the way to go. It's a 30-foot cone. Yeah, so you can take... I mean, you're right on the web, so you're not going to get the part next to you onto the sides. But you can blast towards the middle of the cone and get, or towards the middle of the web and get most of it in the cone. You, we can hear directionally. So if you can hear him, you should be able to approximate. Well, I could also just trust Shaba's eye and like make sure that the center of the web is the pizza's going to hit that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just have to trust Shaba on this one. Like I can't know for sure he's invisible, but I think we take the chance. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I guess so. You in? Brian, you, you seem hesitant with this play. I mean, you are the one taking the turn here, so I'll let you decide. You're the master of your own fate, Tukas. That's right. <laughs> well, I have, of note... And I, everyone uh, else is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, can't, we can't lose the crown. Like, it would suck for the party to go down here because we're spending all this... It's like, the adventure's kind of over if we lose it anyway. Yeah. Follow your gut. Trust your instinct. And I've got two second level spell charge, spell slots, so I can try it again. Yeah, yes. go for it. I wish I had my action surge still. I wish I had my action surge still. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, I don't roll anything. I just... I charge up the frost gauntlets and... You can roll your damage. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> What's your spell save DC, Tokus? Uh, I just looked at it the other day. 15. 15. That okay. sounds right. Yeah, Tokus has... Uh, and then 3d8 it deals? Are you sh- are you sure that I'm 15? I thought I got stronger. Uh, my intelligence is plus four. Oh, are you getting that from the Eldritch Knight page? I just have it written down on my note card. But didn't my intelligence go up? Plus four, plus three of proficiency, base eight. So okay. Yep, that's correct. That's 15. Okay. All right, deal some damage, Tokus. But I don't know whether or not he was successful. Well, it doesn't matter. You're still going to deal some damage. All right, so I've started off with a one. Uh-oh. Now I've rolled a two. Oh, great. And then I rolled a five. And there's no bonuses beyond that, right? Like, literally, that's it? That's it. Just the yep. dice. So I rolled eight damage, guys, on 3d8. <sighs> okay. <laughs> that's something. I can't know whether he succeeded on the con check or not, right? You can't see what happened. Ah, so he might be frozen right now. Wouldn't, wouldn't, <laughs> hang on a second, though. R- riddle me this. Wouldn't we visually see the ice, like, if I was successful? Cascading around his form. Well, no, it's, yeah, it says they're hindered by ice formations. Would the ice formations become invisible because he's invisible, or would he just be caked with ice crystals? That's a complicated thought. I mean, the ice wouldn't be invisible, but it's like these formations would be forming on the web, on him, on everywhere around. So it's hard to tell what's okay. him. And what's what's him. actually him. But, but like, wouldn't it like kind of shape? <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Because like in my mind, the ice formations are like people are like I, I would hit like a pack of goblins and then it would like freeze their little legs to the ground. <laughs> right. So like I ima- I might see something that looks like the outline of legs if if in theory it was successful. Right? I mean, like, that would surely look different than a web, like the shape. The- I mean, if you flame throw to open air and then you flame throw around a tree, you see the fire moving around the object that's in front of you. There's also the, other, the fact that the webs lightly obscure the area that they're in, so uh, they're already making it hard to see to begin with, okay. and he's invisible. And the spell's not designed to reveal invisibility. So I think all of those factors combined, you can't tell for sure. And it's nighttime. Okay. Uh. Well, hopefully it killed him. I'm guessing it didn't because we're still talking. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's my turn, I guess. I didn't have a lot of movement left, right? Um, I think getting to the other side of Shaba is as far as you could move. Okay. And Shaba, make a death save. All right. That is an 11 on the die. Okay. Stripey. Brian doesn't get up naturally, right? I'm stable, but I'm stable. He won't reco- he won't wake up for an hour or something, right? Yeah. Stripey will ramp up Tokus's back and launch himself <laughs> into the waves. <laughs> no, Stripey's just going to stand there and growl. 
Strippy's going to make a smell check to see if he can smell dirty cultist. Yeah, actually, that's very useful. Doesn't he have advantage on smell check? Advantage on perception checks related to smell. <laughs> Heck yeah, dog. All right, that's really good. Plus, he's got my profish bonus. That's a 17. See if he smells a stranger. I mean, I guess he would smell someone, but I don't know that he could... You can't pinpoint someone with a smell when they're that far away. Sure. So... I don't see what you are really trying to achieve with that check. If he would growl because he senses a stranger, thereby alerting Tokus that, hey, there's someone there. Sure, he can tell that there's some new smell around. Well, I mean, I was I was already using the frost attack with in, inferring that you actually captured the guy with the web. Right. There was already some level of inference there, and I think Thane was generous with my perception roll. Um, I don't know if there's much more we can glean. Right. He's in the web. It takes time to get out of the web. Like, even if he's succeeding all his different checks, it's still difficult terrain. Yeah. Right now it's Tokus' turn to be attacked without your armor. Oh, boy. The creature dives out of the darkness at you. Mm Mm-hmm. And, wow, somehow manages to miss with its bite. All right. But it does claw you twice. Hmm. So I I could shield guys, but I don't think I should. Hmm. No. I don't think it's, it's worth it here. It's, it's probably not going to get me to what I need. Yeah. Okay, so it hits you for a total of 20 points of damage between the two claws. 20. All right. Yikes. Wow. Took his turn. The creature flies off. And actually, since you have a melee weapon equipped, you can attempt to attack it as it flies by. I should. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Okay, hang on. That's actually pretty good. That's a 21 to hit. That hits. All right. I'm still two-handing this thing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, max damage. I mean, not, nice. no, no. No, 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 it's not. It's oh. not. I rolled an eight <laughs> on a d10. Okay, well, uh, that's still so good. It's 12. See, if you had only been single-handing, then you would have done mm. max damage. It's too bad you were double-handing it instead of single-handing it, Tokus. And, but, uh, I mean, hey, that's first blood on this flying creature that's been plaguing us yep. for months now. 12 measly points. Well, yeah, so you slash it across its tail as it flies by. Oh, no, 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 I pulverize it. Bash you, it. Yeah, that's right, not slash, you bash it in the tail. You bash. It's not going <laughs> to like that. <laughs> and give me a perception check to see if you can keep track of it. I rolled pretty low here, that is a six. Okay, yeah, it vanishes into the darkness again. So it flies out of nowhere, strikes, and then disappears again, and it's been doing this over and over. <laughs> but it's your turn. Flying enemies are really strong. Okay, so this guy, if he's still alive, he's he's trying to run away from us. I would guess he's running. All right, hang on. I, I know what I need to do. Could I session in to try to perceive if he did exit the web, which way maybe he went? I don't know where to aim. The ne- I have another pizza. I got to take him out. I have another frost attack. Or, or I could try to get Shaba up. What do you think, Brian? If I get Shaba up, he's probably better at hunting this guy than... I think so. We might be at that point. Yeah, it would probably just be another perception check to see if you could spot him and having advantage on that. You know, you may or may not, because he's still invisible. Right. So then, f- for free perception check, and then decide from there, maybe. I'll try to perceive. Yeah. Which way did he go? That, my friends, was a 12. You can't tell through the webs and the ice if he's out of there, if he's still in there, or anything. Hmm. Hmm. I would heal Shaba. I probably should heal Shaba. What do you think, Jay? Do you in agreement with Brian and I? Like, you're going to be better at hunting this guy. Well, so, from a physics perspective, the webs are webs, which means that they are going to be there unless there is something in them moving, in which case they will also be moving. So if the webs are not moving right now... He's probably gone. If they are moving, he probably isn't. Should be pretty easy to make your decision based on that. I mean, they'd be moving a little bit with the wind. But they'd be moving more if someone was struggling through them. Yeah. I'm going to say that you haven't spotted any exit points in the webs. So there's nothing that's, like, ripped through the webs. Yeah, nothing stands out to you as him having escaped through it. Okay. So I actually want to take the gamble instead, Brian. Okay. Which maybe you would advise against. But what if what if I heal myself, because that's a free thing to do with my second wind. Let's start there. Okay. Alright, so I heal myself for 13. That's not bad. So that brings me almost back to max, actually, gents. Um, Mm. Okay, so could I circle around? 
Like, what if I just do the reverse? Or no, 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 not reverse. What if I go 90 degrees and then blast in the direction that I didn't already blast, right? Because, again, if it's a 30-foot cone... I mean, you already got all of the webs except for the closest corners. Yeah, you, you got a pretty good spread there. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a matter of whether you hit them or not. I think you just didn't deal enough damage to finish them off. Right. So I think I do it again, Brian. Yeah. And just roll better. That's what I think. Yeah, try harder this time, I would say. Just roll better, yeah. Okay. Believe in the heart of the dice. Okay, here we go. A little more. <laughs> Three D8s. Toss up a prayer to the RNG gods and roll away. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that, Jay, but um, I will roll this and hope for better results. That was abysmal, my first. <laughs> yeah. If he succeeded on the con check, then it was four damage. <laughs> the spell just stinks. Just really stinks. Four out of a possible twenty-four feels bad, man. Oof. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I hope this is hitting him. I don't even know if it is. We think it <laughs> is, but this might just be a complete waste of a turn. But here we go. Ooh, seven off the bat. Nice. Here we go. Another seven. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Here <laughs> we go. Oh, and then a three. So 17 damage. Okay. Hey, 17. Save for half. Not too shababsky. All right. Well, the half save is as much as your full last time. I mean, the webs are crackling and just covered with ice all over the place now, <laughs> so you can barely even see through the ice at this point. You don't hear it or see anything in particular that says whether you hit or missed, but mm. that area is frozen. Fully <laughs> froze. Its nose is froze, its toes are froze. So he he might be frozen with one of those two attempts, right? He may uh-huh. have the ice formations at this point. Yep. Yes. That's the best we can hope for. I guess, should I start moving towards Asla? Who, who am I healing? I guess that's another thought. Do you have the ability to do that this turn? No, I don't. I'm just trying to think, should I move towards Aslo if I'm going to heal you? Or am I healing Shaba? I think Aslo first, because he can mass heal, right? Mm, that's true. He could get you up quickly, but... There's also the fact that Shaba's bleeding, and Aslo's... Right. But, Stable. But I have, I have one success. I'm not worried. That's true, uh-huh. but at the same time, you're going to be better to find this guy than Aslo, right? Yeah. True. True, but like we need to make sure that it was either, if it was a kill, we need to confirm it, and and if not, we need to give chase and still just keep getting nipped by the thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think we get up and running faster if you res Aslo first. Yes, or you res Shaba first while Shaba's tracking the guy. You res Aslo, and I come back and get you the healing potion or whatever. Yeah, I think we want to get the. I th- I think we don't want to lose the guy. I'm going to stay next to Shaba. I, I understand your logic, Jay, but we I don't know where Brian is in the turn order. Mm. Like if I if I knew that, I think it'd be easier to just heal him. But I think we need we need you tracking this guy. We need to confirm. As was before me in the turn order. Is he? Yeah, his initiative was a twenty. Mine was an eleven. So okay, you're thinking I run back, heal Brian. Brian's going to get you up, and then we track him. And I think it's your action to get him up, and then Brian's action to mass heal, and then we're good, right? Versus you having to heal me, me get up, track the dude, you running over to Aslo, Aslo getting up. Aslo's not going to be able to make it out of the silence in one move. Yeah. He has to stand up, too. Oh. Mm. That's my other concern. I think I think we stick with this plan. Let's get you up, get you tracking, and we'll okay. recover. Yeah, I guess, I mean, you don't really know whether the silence is still up, but I guess, I don't even know how silence works in terms of, like, is it a concentration spell? It's concentration. Okay. But let's err on the side of he's not dead. Maybe he's frozen. Because mm-hmm. if, if he succeeded, well, maybe he's not frozen then. I mean, if he succeeded on both con checks, he could still easily be alive. Yeah. So I need to get you up. I need you tracking. That's I think that's where I'm at with it. Fair enough. So Shaba makes another saving throw for anything else. Uh, that's good. Another success. And Stripey is just going to hang around some more. Um, Stripey's going to start circling the uh, the web. So he can get around to the opposite side. And he'll sniff around and uh, try and detect any nefarious activity. I really hope we didn't lose him. That was both of my level two spell slots. <laughs> now we don't have those to fight the Drake with. The Drake, as you called it. They call me the Drake? <laughs> they, some call me <laughs> the Drake? <laughs> It once again materializes from the darkness, dives down, and it's going to land next to you, Tokus, mm. with its feet on top of Shaba and attempt to pick you up. Oof. It's going to attempt to pick Shaba? Yes. Ooh, uh, wow. can I can I impose disadvantage on that? 
Oh, I don't have my shield. I don't have my shield. No, 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 shield. This whole time is that is that how that works? Let me look at that. Yeah, it requires you having a shield. Oh no, no Lucas, you're a defensive fighter. Oh no. What have you done? It's all your fault. So yeah, it grabs Shaba, picks him up, and starts flying away, and you can get to attack him. This guy's taking like one hit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gone. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I could attack him. Could I grapple him instead? You can't grapple as an opportunity, can you? It is an attack. Can't you grapple as an opportunity attack? Making a melee weapon attack as an attack of opportunity is not an attack action. You can't grapple or shove. Let me make sure this is for 5th edition. Uh, making a grapple requires you to take the attack action. I can't save you. I had the answer purple in my search history, so it was already one we've looked up before. So no, you cannot... <laughs> Cannot grapple as an opportunity attack, but you can attack. I'm going to try to attack. Opportunity him. attack. Ooh, I got, I got a crit. I got a crit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Two D-Tenzos. Here we go. Yeah. Listen to that. Two dice, finally. I've been rolling lots of singles tonight. <laughs> wow, I rolled four on both of them. That's disappointing. Uh, mm. Okay, so that's 12, 12, right? Four, four, plus the bonus four. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awful. That's, that doesn't feel like a crit. It's exactly what you hit for last time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> it's interesting. We're 38, 38, 12, 12. There's a lot of symmetry there. Yeah, we're, we're fighting for best damage dealer tonight, Java. What I want to know is, why is everyone always trying to pick us up and carry us off? This is really bad <laughs> that you're going to get carried off. Yeah, it's like super bad. This is very, very bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't see this guy... Uh, you, you might be dead, dead. Yeah, this guy's not dying anytime soon. If he's big enough to pick me up then and fly with me, then uh, he's... Well, not. that thing has a mission, though. Its mission isn't you. Its mission is the crown. So we might... It might not be over. Uh, we'll see. So make another perception check to see if you can track it into the darkness as it's flying. And it's your turn. Should I use my session, insp- guys? You think? Mm. I'm just going to roll it. I rolled a 17. Ooh. Nice. That... Is the second time that you have exactly matched. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dang. So this time you can still just make it out in the shadows. So you know where it is. It's carrying Shaba. It's still flying relatively low, actually. Okay, so I can see that. It's like, hmm, it's not just like whoosh, running away from the fight necessarily. Right. It's down and flew diagonally past the webs a little ways over the grass. Yeah, I mean, even if it's not trying to recover the crown, it's going to try to recover the rider. We could assume that, that he's the rider. Mm-hmm. That's my best guess. If it is just the two of them, then it's got to be that cloaked dude that's concentrating on the silence, which means he's taken a lot of damage and has passed all his con checks. Yeah. Well, you haven't gone back into the silence to check if it's up or not. Right. Right. He may have, he may have, the silence may have broken even if he's not dead. Yeah. There's been a lot of, there's been a lot of checks. Well, it's your turn, so what do you do? I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, okay, Shaba's been carried off. You can still see him. Right, I can see him. Is he within 90? Yeah, he's just past the web, so he's maybe 30 feet away. I mean, I could shoot at him. That's not that far. I mean, can you get to Aslo in one turn or no? Yeah, can you Can you heal me? Yes. You can go to Aslo and heal him. I would also say that... The Wand of Web was left behind where Shabo was. Right. Hmm. I was actually thinking about the Wand of Web as well. Hang on, how far away is that dragon thing? About 30 feet. He said 30 feet. I can get to it. With jump? Guys, I, I have Misty Step. Or jump. Like, I could <laughs> I, I could get to it in theory. No, I don't think jumping would because of how physics works. Like, it's flying away. I don't think I could actually, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. not that I'm trying to rule the Dungeon Master not in my favor... That just doesn't seem like it would make sense, because it's already flying away, and then I just, like, Super Mario jump. Well, you would go right after it, so maybe you just immediately react and jump a little faster than it's flying. <laughs> I mean, I would love to use a bonus action to cast jump on myself and try to jump after it. So that would be a pretty cool Super Mario move. Yeah. Tokus, heal me up. I think I have something I can use. Yeah, we should have healed. Uh, so you you only have to move a few feet to determine whether the silence is still up or not. Uh, you got out of the silence right when you moved past where my body was before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, so you only have to move a few, like ten, maybe five or ten feet back. I, if I'm using jump to jump to the Drake, I have to move backwards anyway because I need enough. Le- I, ne- I need enough running strip. Uh-huh. I can't just run into the web and then jump. Yeah. So the thing is, if you get Aslo up and he can cast a distance heal on me to wake me up while I'm being carried, then I can fight back. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I think I think I try to get him up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step back as if I'm gonna go for the jump plan. But can I still hear myself speaking? As you're narrating your own actions, <laughs> I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna take two <laughs> steps back. I'm getting ready to jump. Do I hear myself? It's Tokus Alton. <laughs> it's like when you're like playing sports and narrating for yourself. Token <laughs> drives down the field. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm coming, Shava. <laughs> All right, so I, I back up. You start stepping back, and you do still get silenced, oh, which means no. Ezo's not going to be able to cast this turn, even if he does get up. Okay. Wow. So what? I like the jump plan. Jeez. I have not jumped on myself, so I will have to run out of the silence, mm. cast jump on myself, and launch myself <laughs> yep. into the night. It's Tokus Alton. <laughs> it's fifth down and two home runs. He's on 14th base. He's getting ready to run through the uprights. And the 322nd yard line. <laughs> okay, so I double back and then realize it's still silenced. And then I'm going to... Uh, the dungeon master knows what I'm trying to do, right? Let's do this. I guess once I get there, I'll figure out what I'm doing. So you start charging forward, activate your ring at the last moment before you hit the webs, jump over, brush your toes at the edge of the webs, the icy webs. And I kick the guy in the head if he's there. I kick him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have you make a grapple check to see if you can grab onto this. Uh, it's oh, it's time gosh. for inspiration. The session ends. This is yeah, it. That's, this is when you wanted to save it for. We finally found it. And this is a strength check or what kind of, what is a grapple check? Strength, grapple right? Grapple is athletics. Athletics. How is my athletics? Tokus has to be athletic, right? I have a plus four to athletics. Oh, wow, I crit. <laughs> Critical success. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. So you launch yourself at the Drake, <laughs> and you can land on it wherever you want. Do you want to land on its back? <laughs> Ride it, Tokus. Ride it. <laughs> Ride it to justice and freedom. Well, where's Shaba? <laughs> like, as I'm, as I'm coming at it, do I see where Shaba's body is? Shaba is being held kind of precariously in its claws. It doesn't look like it's really used to carrying heavy things this way. Oh, perfect. Why don't I just grab onto Shaba? Mm, no, that puts you at too much of a disadvantage. Get up on it, dude. Yeah, but I want to feed you a potion, maybe. Mm, no, but you want to disable this thing. Yeah, I guess if you land on its back, you can just sit there stabbing it over and over again. <laughs> yeah, you literally just stab it Stab it Or just death. put it in a chokehold and go for a, go for a cr- triple crash landing. <laughs> Ooh, with your gauntlets. Of- so, yeah, crash landing <laughs> could kill you, though. You would take automatic death saves. Yeah, but I've got two successes. Maybe you could steer it. We've seen cultists ride this thing before. Mm -hmm. If I grapple a flying creature, what happens? Because grapple says move speed zero. Aslo has a great point. This is theoretically a somewhat domesticated beast that is used to being ridden. So if you jump on it. Okay, grapple denies movement, but since I'm giving you the opportunity to pick how you're landing on it, I would say you can either land on it as a rider, essentially... Or you could try to grapple its wings and prevent it from flying, and then you would crash. Oh. Because that's mm. what denying movement does to flying creature. Yeah, we're not that high up. Go for the crash landing. Tonto, jump on it. So is this my attack action? Because in theory, I would get two attempts to grab its wings, wouldn't I? Payne is saying that you already can do that, because you got a natural 20. I want to grab its wings and like try to break them. <laughs> <laughs> this, I'm just going to rip them off. Just going to rip off the wings. <laughs> I mean, rules as written, grappling it will make it fall. So the extra thing that I was adding was allowing you to write it instead. Yeah, grab one wing and turn and send it into a corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I'm going to grab it however best Tokus thinks would make it fall. Let's bring it to the ground. Okay, yes. probably I mean, it would be enough to just grab one wing and like, smash into it and yank it down. Take it down. <laughs> it's so epic. And then you go twisting down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, let's let's role-play that. Let's do that. All right, so you fly <laughs> up, reach out, one hand grabs its wings midpoint or so, and you just start pulling down and twisting it, and the three of you go corkscrewing down to the ground. Yeah. And you all smash into it and take some damage. Oh, no. <laughs> Hashtag worth it. All right. So that's an automatic fail for Shabs. Yeah. Shava, you take one failed save. Yeah, so I fail a death and save. And then... I could take it. Tokus, you just take one point of damage from falling. Okay. And Beast takes some, but it's on the ground, and you still have one attack left. And then this is the one that I should spend as a grapple. Uh, you already are You're grappling You're already it. grappling it. Okay, so I'm grappling it, and now I could just hammer it. Make a bite attack. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, like, like if, if I'm grappling, I lose the versatility of the Warhammer, but that's okay. Yeah. 
but it can't fly right. away as long as you're holding on to it. I'm going to Kershmack it. Actually, wait, I could green flame hammer this thing. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> no, you, you already used your bonus action, and you already made an attack, so you just get one regular attack left. Yes. Uh. I attack it. I rolled a five. That's would be that would be <laughs> a twelve to hit. That's probably not good enough. Okay, no, mm. but you have brought it down to the ground. Nice. Bring down the beast. Bring down the beast. And you're still on its back, right? Grappling it. Uh, I don't know quite the configuration. I am. I mean, it kind of spun around when you grab it. Swing, so yeah, we corkscrewed and fell. I'd say that you landed on the ground next to it. Still holding on to it, though. As long as he doesn't break my grapple, we're good, Jay. Yeah, right. That's what I wanted to make sure is that you're still grappling it. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it in my iron grip. Doesn't it have to, like, beat me at a strength check or something? Yes, or? I think. Or it has to make some athletics or acrobatics or something to escape. I wish I had another bonus action. I could hex it for strength or something. Mm. Or I don't know if that makes it harder to get out of a grapple. Uh, I don't remember if a grapple is the thing where they get to choose either athletics or... It's either strength-based or dex-based. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that he could just get around that. I see. Yeah. Well, this is turning into an interesting fight. <laughs> Certainly. But, like, I hate that we've left the other guy to maybe worm away. Oh, or, or else he's sitting there frozen, you know? He could be a popsicle right now. That's very true. Think positive, Tokus. Think positive. Think popsicle thoughts. Think of the happiest <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, you have to envision the future that you want. Any happy little thought. You've prevented him from flying. So, in a way, that's like flying. Well, I've prioritized keeping you versus trying to find the crown. Mm. So I hope that mean I hope that's meaningful. I think you single handedly took care of both. Wow, maybe. So the Drake releases Shaba since he wasn't really holding him very well at this point anyway, mm. and he tries to attack you. Mm. Just turns around, and tries to kill me, huh? He hits you with a bite and claw. Oh. Uh, maybe I should tr- attempt. To shield to see if it stops any of these hits, guys? What do you think? Mm, shield, yeah. spell? Yeah, I think so. I haven't used any of my first level spell slots. Well, how many hit points do you have? Um, I mean, I'm at 58, but if I don't have to use the armband, I'd love that. Mm-hmm. Oh, 58? Yeah, you, I don't know. You're probably fine. I'm probably okay. But he's hitting me with both attacks. I already know that it's both. Yeah, that's true. Technically, Thane shouldn't let me know that it was both. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, he bites you, at least, but I will also say that bringing your AC from 12 to 17 isn't nearly as good as bringing it from 21 to 26. Right. True. So, percentage-wise, it's less likely to help out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm just going to let it... I'm just going to let it go. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let him chomp on me. Besides, we flavored your shield spell as being your actual shield, so... That's very true. You don't even have it on. (laughs) Did Mm. I... I, Is, like, my shield, like, way back at camp, or did I bring it... Oh, man. Where you were sleeping. Where you were sleeping. Oh, boy. You take 25 points of damage from the bite, and another 12 from the claw. I'm so vulnerable. That bite, man. So... 37. That bite is brutal. So vulnerable. Brutes my goots. Yeah, it brings me down quite a bit, guys. Um, and the invulnerability, the way that that would work, I'd have to pick one particular attack, right? Yeah. Uh, is that even worth it? Should I stop the 25? That's a lot of damage, guys. What do you think? Brent, did you just gain three experience points for killing a centipede? <laughs> I did, yes, actually. <laughs> hate those things, man. It's actually seven experience points. Thank you very much. Is that what you just did? Uh, killing a bug, yep. Nice. On my computer. Yeah, in the wall, like behind the walls, I'm spreading diatomaceous earth before I put the drywall up in my basement. I have no idea what that word means. It, diatomaceous earth is the stuff that when bugs crawl through it, it slices them up and kills them. I've got a bunch of it sitting right there. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you have some? Yeah. It's like natural, it's safe, like for kids and pets and whatever, but it kills bugs dead. Wow. Hmm. So I'm just like on the footer plates of every single wall that I framed in. I'm just it's also sp- edible and supposed to be good for your digestive system. Mm, that's true, yep. What? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. And it holds scents, so if you put things like what was it, mint or something in it, then it'll keep mice away for a long time. Mm. Mice away. Oh it wow. has many different uses. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know what guys? I'm just gonna take it. I'm at twenty one. Let's let's keep this rolling. Mm. All right. All right. Good idea. Well it's your turn again. Man. So I could heal Shaba. If you really wanted to. I mean that's isn't that what I should do? I can't kill this thing in one go. Right. I doubt it. Um I could also heal myself here as a bonus action. I can heal myself for thirty three. So you can heal me and heal yourself in the same turn? Yeah. Yeah. That seems good. That seems <laughs> good. 
Seems pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to uncork one of the special pots we have here. They're two, I, I have written 2d4 plus 2. Yeah, it's a standard healing potion. Yep. I'm going to tilt Shaba's head up just so, so it's like the right angle for pouring. Just realized I forgot to have Shaba roll another death save. For my turn? Yeah, for your turn. I mean, it might be relevant if I get a third success. Or a critical failure. Or a crit fail. If you crit fail, you're dead. Sure, okay. So I'll roll for my turn. Just don't roll a one. Can he roll his inspiration? Um, I did roll a one, but there's also another one next to it, so it's an 11. Uh. (laughs) Oh. good. (laughs) I just wanted to freak you out. (laughs) Success. I got my third success. So wait, doesn't he just wake up then? Only a natural 20 wakes you up. Hmm. But I do have three successes, so I'm stable, right? Yes. Yeah, so I gently tilt his chin just so for the right angle for pouring the potion and pour the potion. All right, so I rolled pretty uh, pretty poorly there. So that is four, six. Six. All right. Six HP. But it gets you up. <gasps> the breath of life. And then uh, I think I should use the bracer to heal myself. That's a lot of healing. Yes, it's a lot of healing. A lot of good healing. So I'm going to heal myself for half of my total hit points. Puts me back up to 54. This is your first use of the bracer, right? Yes. You've talked about it a lot, but it's the first time you're using it. I, I did consider resiliencing uh, Shaba, which I kind of wish I had, but all right, so I heal myself up. All right. I'm just envisioning this little gnome holding down a giant dragon-like beast, <laughs> pulling out a potion and forcing it on his friend's throat <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> You, stay there. <laughs> we may have to fight this thing grappled, because it just it's going to do the swoop attacks again if I let it go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has Stripey's turn come around? Yeah, I just realized I missed him when I missed yours, so... So he, he would run back towards where he saw the thing crash, and I don't know if he can get there. Yeah, he was already on the other side of the web, so he can get there and attack. Okay. Could he flank with me? Yeah, could he flank with Tokus, thereby making Tokus's... Yes. We, we can't retroactively improve me. He went after Tokus's last attack. So. Oh, okay. So Stripey first? Uh, yeah, Stripey, and then it'll be you and Stripey again. Okay. Uh, of note, Shaba, I know it's very tempting to just kill this thing. Could you spend your turn making sure the other guy's toast? Uh, I don't know how I can do that if he's still invisible and in the middle of the web. Okay. Uh, I think Stripey missed. He got an 11 to hit. Okay. He missed. Even with advantage. But he is next to the beast. Yeah, and flanking with Tokus now, so... Do we just have to hope that we killed him? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else, really. But the silence was still up. Right. I shout that to Shaba. Shaba, the silence was still up. I think this guy's still alive. Okay. I don't know what I can do, honestly. Is it my turn right now? It's your turn, and you wake up you know, right next to the claws of this beast. <laughs> Oh, oh, what's happening? How did I get here? <laughs> Shaba, it tried to carry you off, and then I had to jump after it and heal you. Uh, okay, so my the wand of web is gone. My bow is gone. Um, I have my sword and my scabbard, right? Yes. And I don't think that I would have the wherewithal. Even if I did have my bow, like, what could I do if the guy is frozen in the middle of a 20-foot cube of web, right? Like, what can I do? about that. You could do something. You could spike growth. Right. I was thinking about that earlier. Mm. It would trap him. It would make him have to stay there. Because mm-hmm. if he's if he's really wounded and he tries to move through the spike growth. Let's say theoretically that, okay, you didn't notice any escape paths through the web and one of your two rhymes froze him in place. We don't know that. We don't know that. Well, we theorize that that is the case, right? If we theorize that that is the case, how long does that... F- freezing last it's he just has to use his action to break it to break it yeah he just has to spend his action so that means he wouldn't dash Mm -hmm. that turn that he broke it there was no indication whether or not he was ever that he ever failed any of those con checks those two con checks or got Uh caught in the webs or 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 got caught or i mean i think it would really cover our bases to just wherever you could place that on the other hand, you did have an indication that he was already heavily battered before he disappeared in the first place. Right. Right. So he didn't have a whole lot of health left, but you don't know if what you did was enough. It's it's your judgment call, Jay. I'm not trying to strong arm you into using the spike growth. I just wanted to be thorough. I mean... Well, so in other words, you're saying we do think that he's somewhere in the webs, or we think that he is not? I don't think he escaped, because Thane was saying with my one one of the perception checks I made, he said, you didn't see, like, a break in the edges or something of the web. Yeah, that's what I was saying before, yeah. So we think that he is 
in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. And he may either he's frozen or not, but he's still we think he's still in there. I would just hate for him to still be alive. Of course. And slink course. away while we focus on the Drake, and this right. could be a way for us to like win both battles in theory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It slows us down from killing the Drake, but it's the only spell left in our arsenal that kind of guarantees if he was still there, he can't get away. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I, I kinda like it, but I it's your it's your call. What what are you doing with your turn else? I mean you have a sword. Um right, my sword. So my my next thought is like, how do I get away from this guy as well? Well, he seems to be going after me. You're not as much of a threat as Stripey and I. So, I mean, yeah, it would suck for you to. I mean, you'll just go down again. There's like, it's not even the issue. Isn't that you would lose the spell slot or go unconscious? The issue is that if he hits you with anything, you go down. Right. So, was your thought to just like disengage to disengage and get away from him? But, but yeah, that doesn't. So, I stay lying down on the ground. I cast spike growth centered on the center of the web, and then I play dead, and that's my turn. Couldn't he just like like touch the ground, just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, like, touch touch the ground and send some spikes that way? Exactly. All right. So the spikes come out about ten feet from the webs in all directions. Yes. I still have a sinking feeling that this guy's still alive. I really do. I mean, he's got to be if the silence is still if up. If the silence is up, he has to be. Right. The silence The silence didn't go away, and I'm hoping that he hadn't slunk all that far away. I mean, like, yeah, if he had good rolls and everything else, like, yeah, he's long gone. And he took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different instances of damage, which means that he... If he casts the spell, he passes contracts seven times in a row. Yeah. I mean, it could be like something super powerful, <laughs> like a wand of silence. I don't know. Right. That'd be insanely powerful. Yeah. That's such a powerful spell yeah. to have on a wand. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he, you know, we don't know. Right. We got to kill him and loot, loot the body. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do you, do you think that you should place the spike growth there, though? Like, where would he have escaped to? Well, we're all over the place now. He could he could have gone any direction. Exactly. Either he's still in the web or he is long gone. Yeah. Right. So we have to tell you, we have to do, go with what we've got, which is hope that he's in the web. We've got to put all our eggs in one basket. Yep. I mean, the, the thing that we could do in theory after we fight this threat is you could do some ranging mm, to track him down but yeah you could look for footprints once we're not in combat i guess exactly let's let's go with what we got for now stripey stripey will attack finally a hit from stripey a solid hit from stripey i'm assuming that a 22 hits yes that's gonna deal nine to our good friend mr weird flying creature black drake guy some call him the drake so he claws him a little bit he looks irritated from that Overall, it seems like you've done a decent amount of damage, but he's it's still strong. Yep. It looks like it's actually starting to be a little bit desperate in the way that it's trying to fight and break out. And it lets out this ear-splitting screech. Ooh. Oof. Shatters the silence of the night, and you think everyone in the caravan must have heard this. Mm. But it screeches, and I need you both to make wisdom saves. Is this magical? No, it's not magic. Oh. Okay. Wisdom save. I don't have my inspiration. Do you, Shaba? I do. I do have my session insp. Maybe... Worth it. Maybe this is a good time to... Sp- well, you're... I mean, Where's you're all like... our help here? Has no one noticed the commotion yet? Well, most of it was silence. Yeah. Yeah. With my session insp, my highest is a 14. A 13 for Tokus. 13 and 14, that's actually enough to succeed. But mm. you are momentarily shaken just in terror of this screech and its noise like it has that effect of fear on you but you shake it off and keep on going wow i mean this thing doesn't have to screech for me to be terrified of it (laughs) that's fair and unfortunately that used up his entire turn but that also wakes up everyone who is sleeping pretty much but most of them are probably terrified from that so (laughs) you don't know how much help you're gonna get after this fight like the caravans like moved on without us (laughs) yeah we turn around and everyone's gone (laughs) just tumbleweeds (laughs) blowing by so who took us man what am i supposed to do here i guess i should just keep whacking this thing all right i am going to green flame hammer green flame hammer green flames and ham Nice, I like that. Ooh, I got a crit. Thanks to the flanking. I did. I rolled yes. a 15 and a 20. I did it. Yes. Nice. That could even be an episode title. What? Green Flames and Green Ham. Flames and Ham. 
<laughs> oh, I rolled pretty low, though. Doesn't really have to do with the story, but, you know, it works. Dude, you know what our best magic item really is? Flanking. <laughs> best magic item in the party. Flanking. That's true. I think advantage for flanking is way too strong. Mm. This is why it's not mm. a core rule. Ah, uh, yes. I should be rolling double dice right now, shouldn't I? Yeah, you did yes. crit. Because that's how crits work. I was all disappointed, and then I realized, yeah. Okay, so that is five fire coupled with 14 physical. That's not bad. That is pretty good. And then, uh, because I'm an Eldritch Knight and stuff, I get to follow up and use my bonus action as a normal attack. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that might be a missing. Let's try again. Okay, that would be a 19 to hit. Hit. And just physical. Another 10 physical. Solid. You can tell that you're really tearing into it. It's having a hard time staying up and fighting. Good. Obviously, it was hoping that its screech would have been more effective than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we rolled pretty well. Dude, if we actually kill this thing, Tokus, you need to just sample every part of it. Just, like, fill all of your vials with its various elements. I mean, I'm <laughs> surprised that we're actually killing it, because, like, he was saying it did, like, a suck ability. Like, I don't even know what it was doing. Was it, like, sapping our life force? Something vampiric. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But it was also probably at full HP during the beginning parts of that, so who knows if it was actually gaining anything from it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's kill this thing so Brian can have a turn. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Yay. Sorry for taking you out so succinctly in this. It's the luck of the dice, Thane. Just blame them. Yeah, from like the very beginning of the fight. Just punish your dice after the session is over. I mean, I have to say it was their plan to try to take you out as quickly as possible, but it worked better than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out without like mirror image or anything or, or knowledge, he's a pretty easy backstab target. <laughs> yep, that's true. So it's an action to administer a healing potion to somebody? Yes. Ugh, gross. Were you going to slink away and try to heal him? Yeah, but I'm going to have to disengage and then crawl away toward Aslo. But if you attack the dragon, you trigger Stripey, don't you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and the dragon's looking weakened. I was also thinking about you rezzing Aslo, but we get to rez Aslo if we kill the dragon, in theory. Right. Well, that may or may not drop us from initiative. Good point. All right, I'll try and hit the dude, the dragon, the drake. You don't even need to be successful. Like, it'll still trigger Stripey. It will trigger Stripey, yeah. That's true. Um, so I draw my sword, I attempt to hit it with a 14. 14 does not hit. Ah, uh, shucks. All right, Stripey. Didn't you have flanking, or does he not have flanking? I don't have flanking. You and Stripey do. Did you stand up to make this attack? Uh, I suppose <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, do I have to? Um, I mean, you don't have to, Okay, but then I don't. You would ha have a disadvantage to attack. Oh. You... Oh, well, then I do. Um, then I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Stripey attacks. Uh, that's a, he gets a 20, a non-natty Twinzo. And he's going to deal another 9. Okay, and then it's Stripey's turn again after that. Heck yeah, dog. Pour it on, Stripes. All right, that's going to be a 23 this time to hit. Hey. And a, an 11 damage this time. And... In a move that should surprise absolutely no one, Stripey has stolen another kill. Oh, kill <laughs> steal it, go to nips. <laughs> Wow, Stripey. He's just filling his bucket. He's just cherry trees. Oh, 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 oh. Just filling cherry, 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 cherries. <laughs> just picking, picking them. them left picking and right. Picking those cherries. <laughs> cherry picking them kills. Uh, Stripey uh, the killmonger. <laughs> and... Whatever this drake was, it lets out one final whimpering screech and then collapses in a rumbling heap to the ground. We finally get to see what this stupid thing is. Oh, <laughs> we finally get to see what it is. We can't rest just yet, Shabba. We gotta find the crown. Yeah, are we still in initiative or no? No, no initiative. All right, I slap on my lantern helm and I beam the... I light it and I beam the light right at this creature. It looks kind of dragon-like, but not like a true dragon. It has two legs, ending in sharp talons, long scaly tail, has you know leathery dragon-like wings. The body is uh, larger and maybe a little rounder than you would expect for a dragon to be. It doesn't have any extra arms, just the wings, so it's kind mm. of more like a wyvern. Mm. And the blackness on its scales seems extra deep and impenetrable. Like, almost as if, as you're watching it, it's just like, black mist is just forming all around it naturally Whoa. all the time. Tokus, is this not your new suit of armor? 
Just you can imagine Dark <laughs> Tokus in a, dark, a suit of super ultra black scale. Super armor. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> I, I'd love to ornament uh, a magical shield with one of its wings. Mm. Mm, that too. Yeah. What does its head look like? We'll just turn that into a helmet, right? Yeah. Yeah. It essentially looks like the black dragon head. Okay. Does it have horns? Yeah, it has some short horns. Don't, don't look like they would really be good for damaging or anything, but they're there. Just ornamental. It's too bad that D&D isn't Monster Hunter, where, like, every time you kill a <laughs> boss, you just, like, get a bunch of gear that looks exactly like the thing you just killed. <laughs> it's like a, a theme. Like It's like, you can pick the sword, or you can pick the spear, and it's like all these different items are just, like, <laughs> based off the thing you just hunted. Yeah. That's what, Monster Hunter? Yeah, Monster Hunter is very much like that. I mean, there's a whole crafting system in some of them, but, you know, I think there's been a few where it was more straightforward, like, hey, like, you can pick this reward. Mm. But Thane Thane would probably be more well-versed with that game than me. I haven't played it. I've just seen a few video clips. Yep, you hunt monsters, and then you wear their stuff. (laughs) So you can hunt bigger monsters. So you can hunt bigger monsters. Right. (laughs) All right, so that done... um, Tokus, why don't you and Stripey go guard around the spike growth, and I will go res Aslo. I'm going to do you one better. I am going to cast Long Strider on you and myself. Okay. <laughs> I think I can do that. For the purpose of... Making us faster. For the purpose of... <laughs> catching the dude? Potentially catching the guy, or healing Aslo sooner, I guess. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm just going to cast it on Shaba. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not in initiative. So the camp is rousing all around you, and there's a lot of like screams and confusion and general terror everywhere. Okay. The extra movement could be helpful, Jay. Just accept my buff. Accept it. Well, so are you You and Stripey still going to go over and guard around the... Oh, of course. I mean, we, we need to make sure that no people from the caravan wander into it for one thing yeah we got to protect them from the spikes right and also make sure that you don't see anything go out of it so i will go over to aslo and cast cure wounds okay you have to Uh. drag him out of the silence to cast that on him yeah the silence is still Uh, there i'll go over to aslo i'll drag him out of the silence see you needed that extra movement do you have healing potions uh yeah, but why would I use healing potions when I have cure spells? Well, there's silence. Well, I drag you out of the silence. It's a very <laughs> geographically possible thing. <laughs> the, the extra 10 feet is going to help Jay do this. It is. That's true. Yeah. It, it will. And by the way, I'm casting Cure Wounds as a second level spell. Ooh, spicy. So it's going to give you... Ooh, nice. I rolled really well as well. Seven, six, th- uh, fifteen. Wow. You heal. I don't think without the long strider, Thane would have let you go in, grab Brian, and pull him out and heal him. Yeah. Just, just, well, I heard you. Just, I heard you. Fair. Fair. Yeah, that's good. It's just making it faster. I just wasn't sure what the the end goal was for, for that. I don't have to explain everything I do to you. <laughs> he doesn't have to explain himself to you. You don't have to explain <laughs> anything you do to me, but it's helpful as a team that we explain our actions to one another. Shaba, I want you to be fast enough to go save Aslo. Well, I was. There you go. Look, I just saved him, and I was faster than I would have been thanks to you. I could have moved 40 feet instead of 30 feet. And I dragged Aslo out of that silence, and I healed him. And it's all thanks to you, Tokus, that I was able to do that so quickly. Does that float your boat there, I, 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 I see. I see what you're doing, Jay. And <laughs> I love you, man. It just, it just se- it seemed like... You didn't understand the long strider. Yeah, it was a, it was a non sequitur in my mind. I just didn't understand why. When I asked you to go guard the thing, you were like, "I'm going to make you move faster." I was like, "What does that have to do with?" Right, right. But let's let's let, let's rewind it and then have Thane tell you you can't do everything you want to. I think we're good. I think we're okay. We're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Looking out for you, Jay. Appreciate it. All right. So camp is rousing. The guards are moving towards you. You keep anyone from actually walking into the spikes. Yeah, people are asking questions. Some of the caravanners look like they're... We, we put caution tape around the perimeter of the... <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Some of them are grabbing their things to try to run away before everyone tries to calm them down and tell them that they're okay for now. We have to go after the dude post-haste, right? Yes, we do. Okay, so you're going to search for tracks? Uh, we assume that he was still in the middle of the web, right? Why don't we just light the web on fire? <laughs> I, I think we should pursue the track idea, right? 
Like the DM just said, you guys want to look for tracks? Well, I was thinking if you search for tracks, just to see if he got out and then... Yeah, you you guys start burning the web and I will percept sh- using my rangery abilities around the perimeter of the spike growth. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I guess Aslo and I could light up some torches. Yeah, uh, yep. 17 uh, to track. We'll, we'll toss them on the web. You do find his footprints walking into this part of the grass and you don't find any leading out. Okay. okay. I was going to say, I do have a Molotov cocktail left over from our last adventure. <laughs> Use it. Are you going to dismiss the spike growth so that your friends can burn the webs? The, I figured they're just, just tossing. Toss, yeah. Just toss okay. the cocktail in there. We're just going to toss them, the torches. I'm not dismissing the spike growth. You have embers from the fires. You could light something pretty easily and just toss it in. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that works. Yeah, let's not let's not spend your cocktail. Let's just chuck fiery, burny things. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start flicking some fire bolts. I'm going to start fire... <laughs> there you I'll, go, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll fire vial the web. There you go. Yeah, and I'm keeping the spike growth up. There's no reason to let it down right now. We're pretty sure that the Crown of Altoria is going to survive a little fire, right? Oh, yeah. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll be fine. It's, it is an artifact. It's just all the other cool stuff this guy was carrying we might be burning, though. <laughs> <laughs> like his wand of silence. That's also a magic item. I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, you, you could detect stuff, Brian. That's true. I could. Can't you detect magic? I don't know. We have the wand of detect magic. Mm-hmm. Hmm. W- wouldn't that direct us to him anyway? It might, yeah, if he's if he's escaped. If he were visible. Doesn't the wand of detect magic let Brian see magical items? And if he has the wand on him? If they're visible. Right. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh if they're visible. Okay. I, I misunderstood the magic. Sorry. All right. So we start by tossing fire at the webs. Okay. Now you burn away all the webs, melt the ice. Yep. And... Did we hear any screams of agony? No. Man. Really? You don't hear anything? And and Jay hasn't seen anything with his 17 to look for tracks. Nope. Nope. Man. I saw the footprints going in, but not the footprints going out. I think there's an invisible body, very charred uh, invisible body. I stepped back into where the silence was. Okay. It's still silent. Did he fly away? Did he, like, cast fly on himself and then just... Teleport? Leave? Fly? Teleport? Yeah. yeah. He might have gotten out of the webbing and the frost attacks. Yeah, he might have teleported. Can we check for tracks in a wider circle to see if he, like, misty stepped 30 feet away and then kept running? Yeah, maybe the rest of us should start looking for tracks. Did you use the detect magic wand? Uh, no, but we try that, too. Yes, to try detect magic. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll increase the perimeter. Let's get the caravan guards and anyone who's willing to, like, just kind of stand around the perimeter where the webs were. Just everybody gather around, because I'm going to let up the, uh, I'm going to dismiss the spike growth in a moment here, once I finish okay searching okay uh wider perimeter 23 all right takes you a little bit longer but you don't find any more tracks and as though you do detect, detect magic you don't detect anything in the webs other than the spells that are all cast there you do detect something magical over in the silence zone something on the ground hmm. okay i will go over and investigate it it's the sword that he struck you with um no his sword is not magical Oh. It's a Morgul blade. But he did <laughs> drop the sword, so... Yeah, his sword's there. It's nice looking, but it's nothing magic. What, what you do find, though, is some small gem that's right at the middle of the zone of silence lying on the ground. Oh. What? It's a gem of silence. A gem of silence? Wow. Pick it that's up. That's powerful. I mean, I, I turn to you guys and go... Pick it up. Pick him up. <laughs> and Aslo's like, oh, like he's like nodding, like, okay. I pick it up and I walk over to you guys and I still say, it's a gem of silence. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that it's just a constant sphere. Are we all silenced now? You bring it out with you and actually as you pull it out of the zone of silence, it dispels the silence spell. Huh. So you, it leaves the area, the silence goes out. And then the gem becomes no longer magical as you look at it with your detect magic. What? Is that because... Okay, let's see. And the silence goes away? Yeah, that's right. Silence doesn't move. The silence spell doesn't move, but it looks as though this might have been a one-time use item. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Something that just creates a zone of silence and then pulling it out of that ended the spell. Mm. I see. I was all excited that we just, like, found an awesome <laughs> magic item. <laughs> <laughs> oh well we can just walk around with silence on ourselves all the time no just like chuck silence at things yeah 
Because, yeah. <laughs> apparently it's something that they can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently. Um, apparently something else they can do is steal the crown and get away with it. Right. Maybe they didn't. Uh, what do you mean? Well, we should check to see if his body's in the area. Yeah, okay, grab that sword, first of all. The sword that he dropped on the ground. Okay, I'll grab that. That he stabbed you with. We gotta have Tokus test the blade for poisons. Okay, I dismiss the spike growth, and I enter the zone, and, uh, well, I pick up my bow and the wand of web and everything that, that I dropped. Just those two things. And then I'm going to, like, feel around in front of me as I walk. So you go over to the center of the web, and you start feeling around, and after a few seconds, you kick something invisible on the ground. What? (gasps) What? Uh, He's here. Oh, my gosh. I think. Feel around some more. All right, I do. Okay, yeah, you bend down and feel it, and you definitely feel cold body. I was going to say warm body, but it's pretty cold at this point. A very cold body. Uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, but he was cold, then he was hot, then he, then he was cold again. We, yeah. Guys, he's here. Okay, I feel around, uh, like, in his, roll the body over, feel around, like, on its head, around its robes and its pockets. As you start pulling things out, they turn visible once they leave his person. Okay. I'm looking for the crown, obviously. It takes you a minute, because you can't tell exactly where you're feeling, but you do find the crown oh. safe and secure <sighs> in your hand. Wow. Oh. Wait, so wh- why was he still invisible, though? That's a concentration spell. No, he drank He drank a potion. He drank a potion. We think uh, it was the potion he drank. He poshed. That's right. This whole time, we thought we were breaking his concentration for silence, and it wasn't his silence. It wasn't concentration for silence or invisibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet cripes. But the most disturbing thing, beyond their abilities, beyond their magic items, beyond the scare that they just gave us of almost getting away with the crown, the most disturbing thing of all is how did they find us? Yeah. We teleported to another question. continent. We went into the, literally just into the wilderness for weeks, <laughs> just traveling through the wilderness, and they pinpointed our exact location and ambushed us. How did they do it? 